Hey guys, I'm back. This will be update number two on Florence. Still a tropical storm, as you can see, even on the uh, most aggressive models, which would be GFS. It's coming in at 58 miles per hour, top sustained wind speed. Oh, wait, here we go. Sorry about that. Usually the top wind speed's over here north northeast but in this case it's north northwest so it would be 64 miles per hour that's still just tropical storm which is what they're reporting and they're reporting 70 mile per hour so that's so far so good look over here at windy their top wind speed is let's see what they now this is on the uh, European model. This is what made me assume it was on the north northeast because the third top wind speed is 46 knots, which times 1.15 gives you the mile per hour, which would be 52.9 or say 53 miles per hour. So it's still uh, not a super, uh, it's not uh, super, well, it's a pretty strong tropical storm, put it that way. Precip wise, not a lot of precip associated with this thing because, as I mentioned in prior videos, it's pretty much surrounded by dry air. You can see the dry air here, color coded in the oranges and yellows. And they basically have uh, the drier the air will be, the higher the temperature. So uh, when you get up into the colder, colder regions, which is the highest parts of the uh, troposphere, that's where the air becomes moister so as you can see Florence is pretty much still surrounded by dry air this is on the lower level which would be I guess surface to sort of mid-range I mean still goes up pretty high I would say up at least a mile or so from my recollection of looking up the troposphere and the different levels it's definitely at least a mile maybe more quite possibly more anyway uh, then you get the water vapor at the mid-level range and this is what you usually see on the weather channel or AccuWeather <clears throat> this is depicting where uh, mostly the storms form would be in this level of the ap the troposphere or atmosphere so as you can see it's still pretty well surrounded by some higher temperature dry air and of course the uh, dry air keeps getting sucked into the uh, storm system that's why it keeps falling apart and it really hasn't strengthened that much. Now they're predicting that it's going to strengthen um, into me, Cat 4 and maybe even a Cat 5. Now that's where they lose me. So here we go with the projections. So uh, we're just going to jump it up real quick to the 13, which is when they're predicting it's probably going to make landfall. Now this is this jumps over this is the GFS model now, as you can see that's pretty aggressive but it's still only uh cat 2 cuz a cat 1's 94 to 90 74 to 96 and then a cat 2 is 96 or 97 up to well let's check. so there's the uh, safer simpson hurricane scale this is what they all go by so as you can see, a cat one seventy four to ninety five mile per hour. Cat two is ninety six to one ten. So this thing's coming in no higher than one ten, even on 
this most aggressive model, which would be the GFS. It looks like it's not going to make landfall quite as early as some of the predictions were a couple of days ago. Because as you can see, it's still offshore at 8 a.m. Thursday morning. Wind speeds hitting the coast around in the mid 20s to 30 miles per hour tops. So let's jump it to 11. It's still sitting off the coast here. This is on the GFS model. But as you can see, it's still no more than a Cat 2. So let's jump over to Windy. We'll use the uh, European model. We'll jump it up to 8 a.m. Thursday. Whoops. I jumped on precept there. So there's wind speed, 65 knots. Move it around, 66, 65, 64, 58. So say 66 knots. Where was that? There it is. <clears throat> So that equals 75.9 or 76 miles per hour. So as you can see, the uh, European model has it only barely a Cat 1. But I mean, uh, I'm not trying to say that this isn't going to cause <clears throat> some major havoc along this coastline. And as you can see, it's coming in a little bit more around the South Carolina and North Carolina border. Let's jump it up to 11 a.m. where the other one was we had. So yeah, as you can see, it's making landfall somewhere around the north-south Carolina borderline, Thursday at 11 a.m. Whoops, there we go. And this one, we're going to enlarge this so we can get the uh, state lines. Still 11 a.m., it's sitting off the coast a bit. So let's jump this one to 2 p.m. So this is... GFS has it going real slow. It's like stalling in here. Trying, they're trying to strengthen it, in my humble opinion. But that's a whole other story. So it's still sitting off the coast, and it's more a little bit north north than uh, the windy model, which I think I can jump this up twice. Still get. A decent shot there we go okay so we jump this in up twice there's 67 up there this is knots so even at 67 knots times 1.15 that's 77 miles an hour so it's still like just a barely a cat one here on windy as you can see, the European model has it coming in a little bit further south. Now, one thing I did mention before, Windy has these great little webcams that you can click on, and you can see what the actual weather looks like. So that might be something to keep in mind during the storm. If they leave the webcams up, a lot of times they come down. Let's see what the GFS looks like on Windy. Okay, so you now here it is, back out here again. Pretty much conforms to the GFS on uh, Vinci Sky, and they all don't always match up. That's why I jumped it over real quick. So let's see. The only other model we can look at is Gem, and that usually conforms more to the European model, which, as you can see. That's pretty much the European model, but not quite. It's got it moving. It's got it a little bit further south, <clears throat> but nonetheless, uh, the precip. This usually is the most aggressive with the precip. You can see it's still offshore, at 2 p.m. on Thursday. 
So this is the GEM model, 5 p.m. Thursday, 13th. Here's the GFS model at 5 p.m. Thursday, 13th. And so you can see the precepts just starting to wrap in. Well, it wrapped in up there, but apparently it's encountering a good bit of dry air. And I can't really show the dry air in a projection specifically, especially on goes, but this gives you the joules per kilogram. And generally speaking, the drier the air, the less joules per kilogram, which is a heat measurement or atmospheric pressure, atmospheric potential energy rather measurement. So you can see the eye, it's got zero potential energy in there. There's some out here, but as I showed you before, well, I'm not going to show you that again. It's the next rad facility. I guess I have to now that I mentioned it. But if you click on this thunderstorm thing, well, actually, I have to go out, go out and come back in to get it, apparently. Let's try one more time. But anyway, you can see the potential energy. This is all represents dry air. We'll just click on. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the current shot, 8 a.m. today, Sunday, 9-9. Here's, there's got to be some kind of a frequency emitter somewhere out here. If you extrapolate these lines, that would bring it out somewhere over here in Santo Domingo or Haiti something like that but anyway this is the cape index atmospheric potential energy and as you can see the joules per kilogram is much higher inside these straight lines which is being this has been this way at least since last uh summer when i was monitoring hurricane harvey you can see i got the mark for rockport that's when that's one first place is harvey made landfall so as you can see this is heating up the atmosphere and it it's projected all across north the united united states and northern mexico so what they're in my opinion counting on is for this thing they're saying it's going to become a cat four maybe even a cat five which is ludicrous from what i've just been showing you but maybe they're hoping or counting on it encountering that elevated potential energy, which, as I showed you, emanates sort of like this. So once it comes in past, say, above the DR, Santa Domingo, it's going to encounter this frequency emission. And that's probably for sure going to strengthen it. Uh, how much i don't know maybe they'll pump up the frequency that's a, always a possibility i'd say more like a likelihood rather than a possibility so there you have it guys i'm pretty much running out of time here i me show you a couple other things uh there's one other super typhoon out there that uh of some concern for sure Super Typhoon Mangahut. They're projecting it hitting the Guam or the Philippines through 13th through the 17th. You can see it over here. This is on the GFS model. This one's a beast, no doubt about it. We'll zoom in a little bit. So that's definitely getting up there into the cat 3 level anyway and we'll look punch on the precept projection as you can see it's gets encountering dry air too but I'm running out of time, guys. Uh, I'll probably give you another update on Florence and, and some other space weather stuff as things progress. Take care. Peace. Got out.